Welcome to Thursday Lines. I'm your host, Scoot, and I'm joined with, uh, oh, I'm not in Melbourne anymore. We've uh, flown the coop there, but uh, MG's back in Melbourne, and AFL starts tonight. Pumped up. Scooty, you've left me much quieter office this morning. Don't have you uh, two lairs floating around my city. So, uh, yeah, it's a bit different down here, Scoot. The uh, opening round, we'll call it for the AFL, and uh, no games in Melbourne. They've all uh, flown the coop to uh, Queensland, New South Wales. So, a bit of a different feel down here for the uh, the first four games coming up. Well, it is. You know, it's the Australian game. It's Australian-wide and in total domination. Nick Tedeschi s- slipped back to orange, but... Uh, You'd be still on a high. What was that feeling when the, the NRL kicked off on Sunday? It is a great feeling when the NRL kicks off any cities and you realise that the greatest game of all is, is back in town. But to, to know that rugby league is on its way to becoming the world game, the global game, soccer in all in all sorts, yeah, there might be a, some kind of provincial sport kicking off tonight as well. But uh, uh, the true world game kicked off last week in Vegas and what a weekend it was. Yeah, I thought uh, the games were quite good. I, I found myself at an Oztag tournament in the Tugan Rugby League uh, Sports Club, trying to watch the games there, trying to watch the games on the phone under the umbrella. I've really, I've somewhat converted to a true Queenslander. But uh, what do you think of the spectacles? The first one, uh, the Sea Eagles and the uh, the Rabbitohs. What do you think of that game? Oh, well, it was that one of the outstanding, an outstanding display of, of, of the great game to to, to to the American audience. To the, the, some of that. Some of the skills on show, the trails, passion. Uh, yeah, seeing Tommy Turbo car up. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, the, the covering tackle from Ilias or, or, or Jason Saab. The intercept. It was plenty of points that one, and then followed up by a, a real defensive stouch. But you know, they, they had seventy nine thousand people watching the game in America. Yeah, in two years' time, it'll be seven hundred and ninety thousand. Yeah, once you see the greatest game of all. You don't turn back. Still, uh, got a few people wondering how they're going to generate two hundred million in the next, you know, couple of years. Do, do the numbers really stack up? In all honesty, I know you're pushing hard to get on the junk up for next year. We might take you there anyway, just to save your uh, your nose and and your tongue from uh, going into, you know, places that I, oh, it'd be the end and the death of me. But there's got to be an easier way. You can be a bit of a realist and put your your financial hat on. The ROI is going to be hard to justify. I tried being a realist last year. I was left off the plane, Scoot, so you're not going to get any realism out of me, uh, out of me going forward. Uh, I, I, look, I, the, the, any kind of thought that this is going to lead to any significant gambling revenue is is wrong. Uh, there's just no, it's just not going to lead to any significant uh, gambling revenue. Where it actually is going, going to benefit is getting more global brands on board for, for sponsorship and the like. But I just think we will see uh, a bit more of that going forward. And... At the end of the day, yeah, they're, they're, and I'll be I'll be stunned if bookmakers in the US sign a product agreement with the NRL. That's not the go over here because I don't do it with the NBA or the NFL. So it's going to be you, you know you, you would be a surprise. But having exposure in the US market has untold benefits there. So uh, and they were talk, and I think this is a bit far fetched. They were talk that yeah, a new expansion team could be playing five games a year in Las Vegas. I hate to say it, they're going to double the product, but. That's the kind of big, 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 big picture thinking that we're getting out of the NRL right now. Mm, big brain energy, that one. It's interesting. I thought the uh, the NFL Game Pass uh, versus the the NRL Game Pass, I think it's 150 US they're trying to slug customers if they want to watch the full season of NRL. So I think that's slightly more expensive than uh, their home-based product in the NFL. And gee, gee whiz, those Game Passes, that's a, uh, a quality uh, piece of uh, – entertainment package that so i think if you are tuned into the nrl you'd be slightly disappointed at uh, how it's presented if you were trying to compare the two and from a value point of view so it, they got a bit of a uh, job on their hands but uh yeah the media gave it a yeah the full rent and it uh looked pretty good from afar so um yeah as a gimmick i think it's a uh, it's a great thing but uh we'll put our serious hat on and, and the real news here is, is afl season is going to kick off and I think it's uh, it's quite refreshing, MG, uh, to have Sydney and Melbourne kick off. I think uh, the Richmond and the Carlton thing's been sort of done to death, but there's a couple of uh, AFL players that are sort of asleep at the wheel or asleep at the back of the class. We've had Angus Brayshaw retire from Melbourne, so he won't be lining up uh, tonight. Sam Bell Pepper got four weeks, and then Jimmy Webster, I don't know if you've seen it, but uh, you would have thought that uh, you've someone's put Victor Radley's brain into Jimmy Webster's head and he's just absolutely ironed out Jai Simkin. 
My mate Clarko's gone in there at uh, uh, quarter time and uh, flown the flag a little bit as well. I thought he was in, well within his rights because I thought the uh, the North Melbourne contingent didn't didn't do a good enough job. But uh, Jimmy Webster did he did he Jerry that it was a practice match? AFL players don't go this hard in regular season. Yes, excuse me. They'll never be accused <laughs> of being road scholars. Uh, footballs in general terms, uh, either in top rope sport or the AFL, but. Uh, yeah, practice games almost, uh, they don't tackle scoot and it's very much touch football. And then uh, we get two instances where uh, Pearl Pepper goes and uh, gets suspended, misses the first month. And then, uh, yeah, Jimmy Webster, just I'm not even sure how you explain. He's not that type of player uh, in the normal season. He goes and irons out someone in cop seven. Uh, had to make a statement of the AFL. Whether they carry through as the, as the year goes on will be yet to see. But, uh, yeah, they've got some impending... Uh, but uh, legal battles ahead, so they've got to try and make a statement on the back of that. Now they've come out with the uh, all football below the AFL is now uh, concussion rules extended to 21 days. Uh, still can't quite understand why, if it's good enough for the lower leagues at 21 days, they don't extend it for the full AFL. If they're serious about it, they reckon that the uh, the reason why the AFL is staying at 12 days for, for this season anyway is because they're better prepared to protect themselves. Well, they're obviously not watching enough footy because... Uh, it's a weekly basis where someone's getting KO'd, Scoot, so uh, it's certainly not the message not getting through. And it's quite comical. Like in a sport as barbaric as UFC, they put them on the sidelines for up to four months, I read. So, yeah, it's uh, it's 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 a funny one from the AFL, but uh, maybe it is all just for show. Let's have a quick look at uh, the premiership prices and uh, we'll just go over MG's uh, early value selection here because we did cover it in last week's show and might be worth a rewind. If you missed last week's show, we uh, we go through the Premiership, the Brownlow, the Coleman and some NAB Rising Star and we do similar stuff in the NRL side of things. So if you're looking around the edges and you don't want to stump up the uh, the $66 to buy the boys' uh, futures packs, make sure you rewind uh, last week's show and you uh, get something off the bone there thanks to uh, topsport.com.au. Prices here, courtesy of that same bookmaker, Collingwood uh, five dollars, Brisbane Lions six, Carlton seven fifty, Giants seven fifty, Demons eight, Swans ten dollars, eleven dollars, Port Adelaide, Adelaide Crows fourteen, Cats fourteen dollars. They're the major chances, and uh, MG has uh, signalled that uh, Port Adelaide are his best way, or they're going to be early, and then he can uh, make his book around that. So they've been thirteen dollars into eleven. Let's have a uh, a good look at the uh, the NRL market as well because. Uh, I thought it was a uh, it was a it was a shrewd lay early uh, with the Broncos, uh, and it looks like there's not much movement in this market. Panthers might have come off the price a little bit here. They're now into three dollars eighty from uh, somewhere in the fours, and then you got Broncos four forty, Roosters seven fifty in from nine, Melbourne Storm ten, South thirteen, Manly sixteen, a little bit of a short in there, and then New Zealand Warriors at eighteen dollars, and then uh, top ropes. Uh, uh, Corella Sharks are uh, twenty one dollars with the uh, the Cowboys around uh, that eighteen dollar mark as well. But uh, the Chooks were sort of the early value, and uh, Penrith are expected to go well. But the big lay was uh, the Broncos. So maybe uh, some of the listeners uh, last week had a, uh, a mini fill up and uh, dined out on the Chooks. And yeah, I, uh, top right was uh, was all over uh, that one. So it'd be interesting to see how they bounce back. I think. Uh, Broncos have got uh, the Rabbits, I think, uh, next week. So it's uh, it's going to be an interesting clash back up at uh, Suncorp Stadium. But um, let's talk about uh, – we'll go in uh, in sequence of uh, events for the show. When the boys will uh, – all season, they'll cover probably the, you know maybe three marquee or three big TV games. And if you want more of their action, you can subscribe to their full sets and uh, get set that way. The first game we're going to have a look at is Sydney-Melbourne, 7.30 at the MCG, 188 at Top Sport. The Swans, Melbourne, 192. And the total here is 164.5. MG, first thoughts here? Yeah, crack and match here, Scoot. Uh, I like how they're kicking off the season here. We've got potentially four sellout crowds in uh, in the northern states, so that, <laughs> that will be uh, good to highlight next week. Uh, unfortunately, they don't make the grounds big enough up there for the AFL crowds to uh, let everybody in. But, uh, yeah, tonight, uh, Thursday night, we kick off. Uh, last year, these two teams finished eighth and fourth, Scoot, and uh, got all the potential in the world to finish top four sides. So important for either side to kick off with a, with a W here. Um I think it personally. I think the play here. Uh, I like the under. I think one sixty seven half as an opening total. It's just uh, see top sports now one sixty four. I don't think it'll move too much. I just think this will be a defensive battle. It's at night, uh, coming off a, a fairly warmish day in Sydney. Might be a bit slippery, and I just think the way uh, 
these two sides battle it out. They're both uh, both off the defensive side. So um, forward lines have got question marks. If you're going to pick weaknesses in both these sides, give me the forward line. So I just think it'll be a defensive game. I like the under. It's a good spot here at the SCG. Um, between these two teams in the last 15 round, fifteen head-to-head battles, it's 11-4 to the under. So I think that's a play to kick us off. Also, uh, interesting stat, Melbourne's last eight night games, uh, seven have gone to the under. So... Um, in terms of the game, this is a cracking game, Scoot. There's lots of lineups, I know, uh, lots of matchups. Sorry, I know uh, Sydney are missing their midfield with Adams, Parker, and Mills are out, and um, you know the injuries are definitely piling up for Melbourne. They're missing probably about six of their starters, so uh, they've got some coverage issues as well. But uh, I, I really thought Melbourne when they first opened up plus eight, plus nine, they were the play. Uh, the market's gone all the way to pick. It's correct themselves, and now if I was going to have a play, I'd probably just shade Sydney, but. Uh, yeah, I'm going to keep the powder dry there and just concentrate on the under for this one, Scoop. Be a tough one. So it's going to be interesting to see how Melbourne sort of come out. They've had the off-season from hell. There's lots of talk about their culture. Um, obviously, uh, some issues surrounding uh, yeah recreational drugs from multiple players. It's a real statement game for uh, the Ds, isn't it? Yeah, and Sydney are usually very slow starters. Their history uh, – Going mm, back probably shocking. more than a decade is being very ordinary. Um, so at home, um, you know, as we said, sell out crowd. And Sydney have got a soft part of the draw. If they can get 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 over this one, they've got Collingwood, I think, the week after. Um, then their draw really flattens out for a bit. So if they can get one and one out of this, uh, this is the home game, not put pressure on the Collingwood round two. They can get off to a fly this year. So, yeah, Melbourne's got a big test going up there and getting the W. All right. Well, so we'll, uh, we'll bat on the uh, the underside there, 164.5 at Top Sport. Uh, league at uh, Newcastle tonight, top rope. The Knights host the Raiders, $1.40 Newcastle Knights, two ninety five. the Raiders, 7.5 the line there, and 41.5 the total. First thoughts when you look at those markets? Yeah. Uh, so I crowd at Newcastle, uh, big rugby league town. Uh, very excited uh, of uh, a final four star show and to get Callum Polga back to his best. Uh, early season, I think that'll be a general dog. Underdogs are four or more in the first uh, 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 round of the year, cover at 60, more than, more than six, cover at 68%. So, uh, what I was essentially saying is that the market overestimates the teams they like and underestimate, yeah, ordinary side. So, Canberra around a hot tip for the spoon. Oh, for the spoon, but I think this line is way too big here. Knife for that Braley. Raiders out at suspended Horsburg. Sebastian Cleese, Elliot Whitehead out. But, but all over the Raiders this one. They also fast starters. Ricky Stewart has no idea how that time will run. He is one of those bold priority <laughs> horses still going 20 legs clear at the 800. And every now and then they'll kind of hang on. Most of them they'll absolutely ship the bed. But uh, the Raiders covered nine of their last 10 round one games. But Oh, we're backing the, the Raiders with a good deal of confidence here. And the under is also about not games in round one since 2008, 63.3%. Under four out of four the last three seasons in the uh, NRL. So, uh, yeah, jump in on the Raiders, jump in on the unders. Seven and a half. So uh, if he get, if somehow gets to eight, even better. But uh, we'll take seven and a half at uh, around the dollar ninety three or the even money line to kick us off on Thursday night up at Newcastle. So... Could be uh, one and done, or the first bet you have on the Raiders for uh, a little while, and then uh, call the Jets on that one because, uh, yeah, there's many people saying that they're going to come right off this year. Uh, Friday is the next clash up at the Gabba, Brisbane versus Carlton, $1.27. The Lions, Carlton, three sixty. dollars Line 22.5 here and one sixty nine and a half. The market here, Oof, Brisbane uh, look short. If you believe uh, the Carlton height, MG, thoughts on this one? Yeah, well, um, we got uh, second v fifth of the finishing spots for last year, and currently in the betting, these are uh, second and third in the order of uh, premiership betting. So it's a big differential for um, you know open, opening match for having the second the the third favourites in the betting. But uh, yeah, Carlton have just been decimated by injuries as uh, this game's got closer. Uh, I don't like the fact that the two key outs, Walsh in the midfield and Weedering's just a killer down down back. He Basically, is the glue is their defense, and they look very fragile without it. And going up against a Brisbane, uh, you know, powerful front six. Uh, Brisbane at home now have won fourteen straight. The last fourteen games at the Gabba, they've won head to head against Carlton. They've won five straight. So it's hard to go against Brisbane at home with the uh, differential in the in the team setups here. It'd be a huge win for Carlton to get off their you know their 
they're really going about the pumping themselves up and uh you know this could be a rude awakening first up if, if brisbane get rolling um they could put a score on them the only thing that uh does bring it back a bit friday night at the gabba might be a bit slippery and might turn it into a bit of a, a dour struggle but yeah hard to go against brisbane at home scoot they're just uh too dominant up there yeah the uh the wedding losses Massive in the sales well. So what Brisbane missing uh Dodie and Ashcroft and Martin and Motlop for the Blues also. Yeah. Yeah, I just think uh I you know, I know that the hype around Carlton's big, but they're just missing too many too many pieces to the puzzle at this stage. Brisbane are, are very healthy at home. Um, you know, I couldn't buy into minus twenty two and a half. It's a bit like top rope. You've got to favour the uh the pluses early and you can see in the first game Melbourne have been uh, supported all the way down to pick. But, uh, yeah, it's hard hard to bet in this game. And I think the total's probably about right. I think the key with the total, if you're going to play, is just wait as late as you can to see the weather, um, whether the dew and how slippery it is to uh, back uh, either the under or the over in this game. Well, the, uh, the marquee matchup on Friday night in rugby league land is down at Melbourne. Penrith Panthers here, they've been $1.60 into 157 Storm 235 to 240 four and a half's the line, and the over is 36 and a half. The story here is whether Cam Munster will or won't play top rope. What are you hearing? Well, firstly, the story is PVL's that smart of the AFL again and uh, <laughs> jumped into the backyard. I think that may rugby lead the national game once more. Uh, Munster, I think, is an absolute moral play. I know, yeah, there's been talk that he might not play. If he might play, he'll play. A uh, big game, huge game, really set, uh, set the title for their season. First time we've seen. Pat Munster, Hughes, Grant together for a long, long time. Betting out in this one has gone nuts. Ten of them been off the map here. No Nelson and Solomon has played the main reason behind that one. Plus four and a half at home. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming. I am that was a four on the first four <laughs> out of the season. 68%. Thanks very much. The Storm, last 15 years, 14 and 1 in round one games. Bellamy gets some fit. Bellamy gets a rarity. The Paps back. The Paps back. Three, My man, the Paps. Three ten to score a try. One of the great, well, uh, money. One of the great bits of that. It's going to be a moment, as good as the Panthers are. Like, man, they're an elite team. I think they're a better team than, than Melbourne. They're coming back from England. Big, big thing. Big, big thing. They are also a 15 and 14 against the Spirit of the They're a bang on 50% team as an estate favourite. Like, they just do not, yeah, they're, not, like, they're, they're a good team. But they're just they're no superstars on travelling or everywhere. So uh, I'm all over the plus here. And all over the under 36 and a half lowest total of the week. Like we talked about round one, so huge angles here, but a big one for the Panthers. Under 17 and 6 for the estate favourite. 10 and 6 for the Storm Rover Dogs. Jump all over the under here, jump all over the plus and just collect your cash. M- MG, you love back in the storm. You, you, It's been a money making machine for you. You agree here? and Yeah, it's been good. And I'd just like to say, if PVO had outsmarted uh, the AFL, surely he could have organised a play at a bigger venue. And uh, he's got the only game in town, and they want to play it at a stadium that only holds like 28,000. So, um, we don't sell out. We don't sell out. And, uh, we, stick, we stick fat with our venues. Yeah, you it's not, a, not about the not... real stadium in Melbourne. They might play that. <laughs> Clearly not about the crowds in the NRL, TV game only. So. Uh, yeah, nah, Storm. A storm at home. I, it, what was the stat there, Top Rope? They haven't lost since what? Scooty was in school. Is that correct? The Opening, four and one. Eight. That's only because I've kept for the last 15 years. It could go out longer. They, they always never lose when Craig Bell is cut. So I was certainly when, when Scooty was knocking around, the, knocking around the nightclubs, finishing up a revolver or whatnot. So it would have been the last time we lost. Playing devil's advocate, Top Rope, in all seriousness, if Munster somehow doesn't play, what what do you do? Is it all bets off and you run and hide, or what's 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 the option? Well, they're a bit, obviously you, you turn it down. They come a record falls from sixty two percent to forty seven percent when he's out. So you pull on Jared Pezzett's uh, a fairly handy replacement. I wouldn't be I wouldn't be a bullish about the plus four and a half, but you've got to back home underdogs plus four. And lively in the first four end of the year. It does not matter who that. I would back. I would back the West Tigers against against the Panthers. The home run dog there. So uh, you've got to be on it anyway. Uh, but if he goes, the line, the line will get out to somewhere like seven, seven and a half, half, eight. Yeah, yeah. And, and home run dogs are even more on the first four ends of the year. Covered eighty percent. So I'm always cheering and being out. Mm, I think uh, I'll take the three dollars ten Ryan Pappenhausen to score, and I'll just put a warm towel. 
beside myself and uh, just wait for the action to uh, kick off there. It'll be uh, be great viewing. Good to see him back. He looks absolutely on fire uh, in the preseason. So $3.10 will be a gift. I'm absolutely sure about that. Saturday night, uh, it's just ping pong here. Uh, we're back up to Sydney. Greater Western Sydney Giants, $1.66 against Collingwood Magpies, $2.15. Six and a half the line, 166 and a half. MG, when I looked at this market, I thought, wow, something's wrong here. Why is Giants favourite over uh, the defending premiers Collingwood? It just makes no sense to me. Yes, Goody, I agree with you. I can't uh, make a case for how the betting's come up with uh, the Giants. Uh, minus six and a half, it actually opened around the four and it's increased to the six. So I think... Uh, bit like top rope with a storm at the plus in this game. I really like Collingwood at the plus six and a half. Um, you know, I just think they're defending prems. I don't think there's too much in them. You take a line through as close, as soon as the prelim last year, there was only one point to Collingwood, mm. the difference. In a low-scoring slug, I think it'll be uh, pretty competitive. I'd be shading the unders for a total. But, yeah, Collingwood uh, coming off the prem, I think they've had a pretty good preseason. Um, they've got queries on Pendlebury. Uh, is is a wait and see, and that could affect the betting a bit more. I don't think it's going to turn around and come to Collingwood uh, if he's out. So you could probably wait a bit patiently on the Saturday night. A um, few problems in the defence, Scooty. They're going to play with both without Howe and Murphy. He's going to hurt them. Um, it doesn't really hurt the makeup of the Giants. They're not overly tall in the forward line. They've only got to really cover Hogan. So I don't think that's going to hurt them too much. What what surprised me in the betting that with the support in the Giants in this game is um, the Giants have both lost their uh, lost both wingmen in Callahan and Perryman. And I think that really hurts them coming down defence as well. So, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty keen on the Pies here at plus six and a half. I think it's a it's a good leg up in. It'll be a cracking game. This is uh, definitely the match of the round for me, Scoot, Saturday night. And, uh, yeah, I'm pretty keen on the defending premiers to uh, kick it off with a win. I tend to agree. It looks like an absolute belter. And, yeah, one free sausage roll. And I don't think these two teams uh, are that fond of each other. So might get a bit of biff there. So um, be interested to see a little bit of argy-bargy. So it should be a heated game out there in uh, Giant Stadium. And no doubt it, uh, it'll it probably uh, outrank the uh, the Eels-Bulldogs uh, crowd, which is at uh, 5.30 on Saturday afternoon, top rope. And this is uh, one for you. Dollar forty one the Eels, two ninety Canterbury Bulldogs, your team. Uh, six and a half the line into one eighty with top sport, two dollars the plus and forty and a half. Can you make a case for uh, for your Bulldogs? Obviously, your uh, your theme all all round is uh, the big fat juicy plus. So you've already made the case. Uh case you made. Round one dogs are six on more six set percent. Uh no dollar or dogs are doing it there too. Uh get tough at pullback so that Pretty ordinary decision to we paid Crichton to uh, on board. But Eels without Mike Casiba, I'm not sure the Eels are that good this year, so I'll, I'll be low to them. They've got a dominant record against the Bulldogs. This is a bit more tempered than some of the other, uh, other pluses I'll be jumping to this this this, this week. But uh, they've got to be back. It's the only way to play this game, plus plus things half. And uh, it'll be a packed crowd out there, so don't worry about the crowd out. So I don't know if the TV ratings will uh, mm-hmm. sort of tell us one of the great rivalries of all time, Dogs Eels. And what about the uh, the forecast? No far forecast rain. So Sydney's all clear for the weekend. Yeah, it's usually so. an absolute swamp that joint. You'd imagine so. PVL usually 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 dictates what what weather will have, and uh, if you clear the decks this week. Outstanding stuff. All right. Well, there's a uh, a quick look. We've uh, even got oh, the Titans are the other Saturday night game, and then. Uh, on Sunday, you got Dolphins versus uh, North Queensland Cowboys at Suncorp. So a couple of other big matches there to round out your weekend. But um, make sure you check out the LittleBirdie.Live shop. And for $33 a week, you can get uh, Nick's uh, greatest game of all. So he previews all games for the round. Uh, but we've only got time to uh, preview a couple of the uh, the bigger feature games, courtesy of uh, Top Sport and uh, Punning Form. And then you've got MG Stings for $25 per week. And, uh, again, he's uh, got pretty in-depth previews there on all the AFL action, and he also throws in, obviously, his uh, serious betting is around the lines and the totals and the head-to-head action, but um, he even throws in some first goal score options and same-game multi-options for anyone that is inclined to uh, dabble into those markets and multi them up. And the same can be said for top rope. He loves putting in the uh, the first try scorers and uh, other little uh, tasty exotics. 
uh, because sometimes one bit just isn't enough and uh, you need to go <laughs> looking outside uh, the obvious or the uh, the old-fashioned head-to-head sort of market. So make sure you head to uh, littlebirdie.live and uh, jump into the shop to support the boys. And uh, if you want to get uh, deeper into the form, uh, they make life easier. And uh, especially when I've got my racing hat, I love it as a quick uh, reference point. Big thanks to you, boys. Uh, it's sad that we're uh, not in the same studio, but uh, we'll be here together in this uh, digital world all uh, all season. So make sure you follow us on YouTube, uh, jump into Spotify, and uh, get onto our Twitter channels as well, especially during the round. Uh, some of the Top Ropes musings are, uh, are quite entertaining and uh, should be a great year of AFL and NRL. But uh, thanks, boys, and uh, we'll see you next week for a belter. Thanks, Cody. See you, Andre. See you, guys. Make sure you gamble responsibly and call 1-800-858-858 if you've got a problem. But we'll see you next week.